Well, hi, I'm Noah Bradley with Handmade House TV, and on today's episode, I'd like to show you how to build a stonemason's work table. If you've been following along the last couple of weeks, you know that I shared with you how to build a set of saw horses. If you're a carpenter, if you're planning on building your own home, you're going to need a good set of saw horses. And if you're planning on laying any stone, you're going to need a stonemason's table. And that's what we're going to handle today. So stay tuned. All right, so the time has come for me to build another stonemason table, a table where when we are shaping our stone, we don't have to be down on the ground. We can lift the rock up and shape it at a standing position. And uh, the stonemason's table is the solution to that. Uh, my last one pretty well wore out and I'm gearing up for the stonemason academy. And I thought it'd be nice to have a new stout one ready. And I thought I might go through some of the details with regard to uh, how, how I'm building this table. And every time I've built a stonemason's table, I've built it a little bit different. So there is no right or wrong way than how to build one. You just want to build one that's strong enough to do the job that's required of it. And uh, what is required of it is that it, uh, it's going to stand outside in the weather. It's going to carry a lot of weight and it's going to be pounded on uh, constantly. Uh, so the first thing that you need is some uh, really stout legs to support the, the, the table. And uh, you could use something new from a hardware store like, say, pressure treated 4x4s or 6x6s. Uh, 4x4s seem a little bit weak to me. Um, and also, 6x6s uh, seem a little bit heavy on the other side of it. Uh, but one thing I like, I like to use some hardwood, and this is a uh, walnut that's left over from another project that I did. Uh, these are three by fives, uh, which, uh, but I like to use hardwood primarily because they weigh so much. They are much heavier than what, a, say, pressure treated wood pine would be. And there's so much weight up top of a, of a stonemason's table that it tends to want to, tends to want to tip over. And so we, if we put a lot of weight uh, and strengthen our legs, then we've got, a, we've got ourselves a real stout table that'll hold up for a while. And by the way, a stonemason's tables are, are uh, different than uh, wood uh, sawhorses for car carpenters use, and that is that you've got to expect that you need to replace them every once in a while because they're always out in the weather and because they take a tremendous pounding in their life. Now, to determine the height of a, of a stonemason's table, uh, it, it depends upon the, the, the rock you're working with, the thickness of the rock you're working with, and also how tall you are and what your preference is. Uh, for me, I'm six foot two, and I, I came up with it. I wanted to create the legs 29 inches tall. And uh, the, the, obviously, the, the taller a table is, uh, the more the closer the rock is so that you can see it. Uh, and do a fine job on the workmanship also, but the, the taller one it is, uh, the higher you have to lift a rock from the ground in order to get up get it up on the stonemason's table. So there is a nice middle ground. And so what you want to do is kind of work your way back, uh, stand somewhere, pretend like you're holding a hammer and a chisel in place, how thick your rock is, and start working your way down. And so then in order to come up with how big of a table I wanted, uh, it's very easy to get too big of a table. The bigger your table, the less prone it is to tipping over. Uh, but these things weigh a ton, uh, and you want to be able to move them around some. So you, you don't want to make it a whole lot bigger than what you think the largest stone you'll be working with uh, will be on top. And what I had is I had some leftover 2x8 uh, uh, pressure treated uh, pieces. And uh, so I figured I would just make a perfect square and I would make it the same distance as three of them side by side. And so I just, um, I, I got the legs up and then I, I would, uh, I screwed down uh, the, the pressure tree through the first course and, and made two sets of legs uh, with it combined. And then I came up above and I screwed down with the next course, uh, which tied it together in a nice, in a nice square shape. Everything's plumb, everything's level. Uh, it's it's uh, it's sweet, and I, the reason I use screws is because if you use nails, all of the constant pounding, the shaping back and forth, 
uh, the abuse of the table, those nails will work uh, loose real quick and before long you'll have yourself a wobbly table. Uh, screws are screws will go in, lock in place, and it'll make it a lot less prone to, to wiggling. Uh, so the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with, uh, with, uh, with my missing middle pieces and I'm going to screw them down into the board below. And then I'm going to come in with a skirt board around the uh, around the entire perimeter, and that will uh, be able to fasten into the into the legs and into these other pieces, uh, bonding it even further together. Uh, but also that skirt board will come up about three inches, so that I can have myself more or less a tray here that I'll need to fill with sand. And, and masons always work, need to work off of some kind of sand when they lay their stone down. Uh, if you shape a rock that is on a dead hard surface, such as something like this, uh, the rock is going to have a tendency to explode into a lot of pieces. Uh, whereas if you want to create a line and shape a stone, it really needs to have a dampening effect below it, uh, such as a good bed of sand. And then I'll probably come down about two-thirds of the way and, and put a band board, a smaller one, at about this level. That'll give my table a whole lot more structural stability. And plus give myself a place that I can occasionally park a foot uh, when I'm trimming my rock. Well, all right, that about wraps it up for this week's episode of Handmade House TV. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope that you'll consider building yourself a stonemason's table. It's such a joy, it's such a pleasure to have versus shaping all of our stone down on the ground. All I need to add now is a few inches of sand and I'm ready to start working on a, a fireplace. And that's exactly what I'm going to demonstrate. I'm gonna teach you how to do in the upcoming Stonemasons Academy. If you'd like to learn more, just look at the link down below this video about that. I uh, hope to see you there in that class. I'd like to thank five new members of the Handmade House Guild. Uh, Steve Stemmler, Rick Begley, Kimberly Nelson, Oleg Zuchenko, and Dorothy Graves. Guys, I, I really appreciate your support. It's, uh, it's it, more membership coming into the Handmade House Guild. Uh, only keeps me motivated to keep creating more of these videos, creating more of these classes and courses to share what I've learned over the years. And uh, likewise, all of you viewers out there, thank you so much for joining me and look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.